Hey, what is going on guys? It is Psycho or Sam here and welcome back to my channel guys and today I'm here with a brand new tutorial video to showcase for you guys how you can use lighting in Unity and a lot of people have been asking me, you know, Psycho, how do you make sure that your lighting is so good in your levels? I do have a level here. I already made it for my previous level design video. So if you haven't watched that video, it's a speed level design. If you haven't watched it already, it's going to be a link in the description below. So you can watch it right away to see the finalized product. Um, I'm going to try to make something that is identical to it. It's not obviously going to be the very same because I'm not also going, I'm also going to use a skybox for this, a skybox texture rather than using the sky dome, which is a 3D model, a third party asset. If you want to check it out, by the way, it's going to be a link in the description too. So um, anyway, I'm going to be using a sky box. So let's get started with this. So I want to go to lighting and I also want to go to settings because previously on the previous version of Unity, uh, you could just go to lighting and click it, but now you have to go back to settings. So uh, because they added a new feature to it. So um, there's also, it's pretty much the same here. You just want to, uh, I usually tend to um, unfold these so that I can focus on this part. Um, it's not very important though. So I want to change the skybox material, obviously. So I'm going to go ahead and click that little circle there and I'm going to search for skybox. I do have a few skyboxes here, uh, not too many. I actually want to move this a little bit to the side so I can see the skybox effect because it's obviously going to play around with the ambient light. So uh, I want to make sure that I use a good skybox. Um, this is a pretty good one. I feel like this is actually very good. It fits my scene. Uh, when selecting a skybox, you just want to make sure that it fits your scene. If it doesn't fit your scene, it's probably not the right one. So you go ahead and choose another one. Or perhaps if it's something that you can play around with the exposure and all that, you can play around with it so that you change the color slightly. Um, also the blooming and all that. So, um, you know, it's really just up to you, but you want to make sure that it really fits your scene. These, these two really do fit. Default skybox and which one was it? This one, demo one skybox. Um, I think default skybox fits a little bit better. I'm also going to highlight this inside of the project tab. Um, I don't think you can do that. That's pretty sad. I want to play around with the exposure, but you can't really do that because it's the default one. Um, I also want to add a, um, a um, where is light? There we go. A directional light so that I have a sun in my, um, my scene. And I want to move it a little bit here so that I can see its direction. There we go. Obviously, I also want to add some shadow type soft shadows so I can see where it's facing inside of my game window. And um, there we go. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to play around with the light settings a little bit more so it doesn't look that bright on the ground because obviously this is a bit too uh, bright for my taste. Um, and also this video is obviously going to be uh, suited for my taste. So if you want to have a different value and all that, it's, it's not a rule for you to have these values that I use. It's just a suggestion by me. So um, you can obviously change whatever you want. Um, Okay, so the thing here is that choosing your lighting or perhaps how the shadows should look in your scene uh, because they are obviously related to each other is very important to know and acknowledge what kind of scene you have. For example, I have a post-apocalyptic uh, post scene. I always call it for post-processing, I don't know why. I have a post-apocalyptic scene, an abandoned car, uh, some rocks, you know, some random rocks and cliffs and all that, and some foliage on the buildings, which really gives off the creepy vibe. So, meaning that I perhaps should give a creepy vibe with my lighting too, because you can always use your shadows to give this creepy vibe, but also have it a little bit more high quality because you can play around with the shadows and as a developer you do have a, or perhaps a level designer, you do have a, cre a freedom of creativity and freedom of expression of your creativity, meaning that you can use the shadows, you can use the lighting and you can use the models for your granted. Um, so for example, I have models that are sticking out a little bit. You can see that the buildings actually are not flat, like they're not flat horizontally, they actually have these parts that stick out like these parts that are highlighted right now. You can see that. Um, so what I want to make sure to do is I want to make sure that these sticking out parts are going to stick out even more by using my lighting. And I can do that by making them more obvious by using shadows. So if I say had something like um, this, 
just move this up a little bit too. So you can see that you can see the sun, you can see the bloom effect, and I also have the I also have the um, uh, on my main camera I do have the new post processing stack effect. So there's also a video about this. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and check it in the description below. I'm gonna link it there so you can see a full out tutorial, a half an hour tutorial video on how I actually make these post processing effects really good. So um, you may want to check that out before you check this video further. Anyway. I want to go and get back into this. So you can see that I have the sun in in like facing towards my camera, and it looks pretty good in terms of how the sky looks and how the clouds look. But the models are way too shadowy. These are way too dark for my taste and for my level to stick out. The car is so bright. The rocks are a little bit more bright, and the buildings are just dark, like simply dark. Um, that doesn't look good at all. IMO. I don't like it this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure once again to take granted of these parts that are sticking out of the models on my houses because I do have these non-flat models. Why not use them for take and why not take granted of them for using my shadows to give this creepy vibe out once again? So um, I usually tend to point my directional light a little bit towards them. You can see that if I just slightly move or rotate perhaps the direction of light left and right, you can see that it really just plays around with the effect a little bit more higher. For example, if I have this if I have it this way, you can see that this part is actually lighted up so, or lit up perhaps. So it's it's looking good. But this part is way too dark. What am I gonna do about this? The foliage here is barely visible. I don't like it this way. And you can also see that the shadow here is way too strong and the you know the foliage is not really fitting or suiting with that uh, shadow itself um, perhaps I can move it now nah, it actually looks better like this so you always have to make sure that your lighting looks good for everything and not just one thing one single thing in case you're not focusing on that one single model so uh, what I want to do is actually move it a little bit more left and you can see that the darker areas look so much better because these windows are once again not flat, meaning that the light is going to cast here, but it's gonna cut off with the shadow here, and the same thing is going to repeat here, and here, and obviously here, because these are not flat either. So it's gonna look a lot better rather than having it like this, because it's just gonna be playing shadow all over the place now. If I have it like this, however, you can see that the foliage is gonna be more visible on the building, obviously, um, the these non-flat areas, the windows are going to be more visible, and the models themselves are almost going to look more high quality, uh, since the shadows do really contribute to your scene a lot. So you may want to have it this way, but then again, it really just makes sense if you use it to fit your scene. I have a creepy scene, a post-apocalyptic scene. There we go. I said it right this time. <laughs> um, I do have a post-apocalyptic scene, so I want to give once again. I want to give this little creepy vibe out so why not use it for my granite so shadow is a very strong effect that you can use it for uh, giving that kind of effect on your scene and um, I don't really want to put it or rotate it down way too much because I'm really satisfied with these settings honestly um, perhaps actually I was gonna say perhaps I could have used a little bit more lighting on this part but I'm really happy with this too um, it's good because this part is once again not flat and it sh makes the shadows cast on this part until here where it cuts out with light. So IMO, it looks good because the window looks a little bit more reflectionary in, uh, in my game scene. So if I play, you can see that it almost looks like reflection because it's, you know, there's a ambient color, the blue ambient color from the skybox that is also going to reflect on this. So it looks really good um, the way it is right now. But obviously the ground doesn't look good because the ambient I mean light is way too high so what I'm gonna do is I am going to go to window lighting and then settings um, in here I want to play around with the um, the ambient light so I don't really I'm not sure why they disabled the ambient ambient light intensity here but perhaps it's somewhere else now um, and I just realized it's pretty much the same as environment reflection. So I want to be I want to be able to focus on my game window. So I usually tend to move this here so that I can see how it's going to look in my actual scene. 
So with the post-processing effects and the standard camera positioning that is already represented here. So what I'm going to do, I am going to increase the intensity multiplier just a little bit so that I can see this little blue effect once again um, on the ground, but not too strong because the ground is not supposed to be very plastic-ish reflectionary. I just wanted to be able to re receive some colors from the skybox so that it looks not just yellow or white because of the sun, but also some sort of blue because of the skybox, obviously. Um, I think 0.1 really fits well. Yeah, that really, really fits well, IMO. This is really good. Uh, once again, these are for my tastes. Uh, this is for my taste and for my uh, feelings about the scene. You may have a different uh, perception of the scene, so you may want to change up these effects a little bit, but it's obviously up to you. So this is just the way I want to do it because I do it always in my scenes. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do. And I'm sorry that once again, it wasn't very much of a proper tutorial video, but once again, you can't really make that kind of tutorial with lighting, so, but if you have any other tutorials you would like to see uh, that is in your head right now, let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe also to stay up to tune for new videos coming soon, and I'll see you guys next time.